So I think there's a question from Councillor over there, but she may not be here, so I think she asked if she might be able to raise it later. So if um, Susan Van Ben comes later, then we'll give her that opportunity. Which, so we've got um, uh, questions from Simon King, Penny Heath, um, Edward Lee is actually uh, effectively not here, so we're going to propose a written response. Uh, Nikki Marion, uh, Gabriel Fox, and Jim Chisholm. So if I start with the question from Simon King from the um, Cambridge Biomedical Campus. Um, Kimmich Biomedical Campus Partners are concerned about the lack of progress in resolving the issue of building the bus lane uh, at the junction 11 on the M11. We know that the city deal forward plan includes this item vote to agree uh, a recommended option for bus priority at junction 11 of the M11 motorway. Uh, unquote. We are disappointed to see that this will not be considered by the Joint Assembly until the 1st of December and by the Executive Board uh, a week later on the 8th of December, 2016. Also, our understanding now is that a separate bus-only slip road uh, to connect the motorway with the Trumping Department right is no longer a preferred option, but that uh, the junction uh, and the small section of Hope Parks Road on the junction uh, could be uh, proved to ensure a smoother flow of buses and cars from the motorway to the parking lot, as this is being considered cheaper and faster to implement the uh, to improve the uh, junction uh, than implementing the original slip road option. Um, the need for an improved junction is time critical for us, as staff from Papworth the hospital will start commuting to the campus as of April 2018 and we are planning to uh, provide a bus service to cater for them, but also for the AstraZeneca staff who will begin uh, to occupy the new building on the campus even earlier at the end of 2017. The take up of that bus uh, service will depend on it being reliable and fast, so a real um, uh, alternative to using the car. And we believe there is a significant risk that without improvement at that junction, that the increased traffic from April 2018 onwards will result in possibly longer tailbacks from junction onto M11 and therefore potentially creating a significant safety hazard on the M11. It will also cause increased journey times and will adversely affect reliability of any sort of public transport. This could result in poor uptake for our bus service and we would probably have to cancel it and the traffic problem would be exacerbated even further. So can the board confirm that it will take steps to ensure that there is no further slippage of consideration and resolution of this issue and that it is taken forward as a standalone tranche one project rather than as a subset of the Western Orbit project. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for your question. Um, if I may start by asking Bob Rings to just respond to the principles and some of the details in terms of what's coming forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. I can confirm that the report is in preparation. Uh, sorry, reports of preparation of both junction and the wider request of the following. Could you speak up, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, close enough to these two. Yeah. That better? Yeah, it's much better. Yeah, I can confirm, Chairman, that the uh, reports are in preparation for presentation to the board um, of both the junction and the wider request of normal in the December cycle of meetings. Uh, and they will include um, time scales for uh, taking those schemes forward. So, uh, and then in terms of just um, the issues in relation to the high-risk agency, have we resolved some of the issues there? That's uh, obviously we'll say that, that in, in, in the report where we currently are, in terms of the high-risk England and their plans uh, and programmes for the NM, which obviously are factored to, to take into account. So, uh, um, e equally, there are issues in terms of that, there's a lot of application for the sporting village in that area, which also needs to be factored into consideration as well. And um, myself and um, Peter Topping, the leader of South Cambridge, are coming to uh, meet you in uh, about a week's time. So we'll obviously have a discussion then and um, um, we are obviously keen to discuss the report as soon as it's published. Just a king. So, um, Councillor Burton. So, Mr. King, I'm a bit annoyed, to be completely honest, 
about a non-executive and an independent. Sorry, it's a sign here. On behalf of Mr. King, then, I'm very keen on sorting out this junction of them, and um, junction them, as you probably know. I think I started off in this process of getting a report written by officers. I've pressed officers to proceed with this. I've met the landowner to talk about it, and then perfected the instruction officers on that. And as you probably know, South Cambridge District Council passed a formal motion about this at its last meeting, particularly mentioning that we would be very keen at South Cambridge District Council to help you get from Papa into Edinburgh. But the reason I'm annoyed is that I've been consistently saying via some of you probably know who I'm talking about, that we need evidence from AstraZeneca and we need evidence from Papa to justify it, because the thing that's stopping it being built is the lack of evidence that people will actually use it. So I'm thrilled that you're here today saying for the first time at this assembly that there is a plan to run bus services and that there might be some power from that or something. But I beg you very quickly, and I've said this to this person, it's been very time critical, to give us some hard facts of how many buses and how many people and where the staff are, because that will enable me and possibly my other people to argue more strongly for the business case. And I've been begging for this hard evidence and the hard facts for two months. <coughs> Sorry, I have a bit of bad information in that we did a pitch earlier uh, to the assembly, I think it was in October of last year, and some of the hard evidence was actually provided by Papa was on a collective air trip. And that was just mapping out where their staff was actually being uh, position from where which places in, in the western part of the M11 they would actually have to come in the future to the uh, to the uh, campus. So we were already then saying that we were looking at a pilot project to have a bus uh, make the bus service laid out. So at the moment I haven't got that detail but I'm sure we can discuss it when the visit is actually coming to the campus in a week's time because that is a, a very good opportunity to go into the details. So, so that's, that, that's, very, that's very welcome, but it's got to do with not going to Councillor Topping and going to Councillor Herbert, but it's great if it goes to that. You've got to get it into the officers who are writing the report and who will be putting a recommendation in front of us, and you've got about 10 days to get it into them. And it's got to be not just a plan, but some pretty hard facts updated from a year ago. It's really time critical, but we'll lose this one. We really will. So we'll, we'll have that meeting, but we'll prompt the discussion, um, and if you give well, ring us a call, that will help um, uh, the flow of information into the report. Okay? Thanks for your question. It, is a, it has been a priority for us to achieve a new um, improvement on that junction. Um, the next question is um, question three from Penny Heath. And I think there's three questions, so if we want to take them one at a time, is that okay? Um, what do you want to yeah, yeah, uh, I think it's right, certainly two, by, yeah. two by two. Do I need to press? Yeah, middle button, Penny. Right, the one right in front of you. That one. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, on the assumption that you've all read the questions, um, and I'm talking about the Cambridge Design Guide 2007, that indicative guide to the development process. So my first question was, can the board reconfirm the planning status of the Greater City Deal, uh, I believe it's Project Delivery Group? Um, actually, are, are they developers in, in, in the grand scheme? Um, and if so, which city uh, or district or county um, planning committees will do the scrutinising at planning level? So that's my first question. Whether you want to take that and answer that easily? So I meant, um trying to link it to the answers. Yeah. Right. So the, the status of the um, of the um, of the permitted development transport schemes and which county or city committees will be doing the scrutinising. Yes. I I think it was in the summer meeting, I produced the yep. very good reference 
and it points out, I asked um, Gordon particular where does where the City Guild Board sit yep. in this, in in this uh, framework? Yep. Um, I don't think it's limited properly, so I'd just like to clarify it because I think it's quite important to reassure people are they developments? Are they going to be scrutinised? There's a slight sense that the City Guild Board is writing its own script, providing an access thing, putting itself in planning. I just want to yeah, it just well, it, it, it's, it's not got any special status. It, it has to follow the normal processes for the transport scene. So, um, uh, Bob Ings from the start and then down to the Can you hear me? I need to turn your microphone off. Thank you. Um, I think we, we did cover this before. Um, when in Highway, these, we are not a developing stock, we're acting as a Highway Authority, the City of Ward. And therefore, essentially, we do take our own decisions as the county council would do our highway scheme. Outside the highway, depending on the type of scheme, it would go through the planning as the Chisholm Trail is currently doing. We are grateful that City of Newmarket should go through the Joint Government Control Committee. Um, for even larger schemes, such as Camborne to Cambridge, that could either be done through a transform works order or through a government consent order, depending on the final nature of the scheme which process we use, in which case actually the plan is not in the Secretary of State um, and they consider the planning aspects. So that's the, the formal planning process that, that, that we cover for the city of the So if, if it goes off the highway, say in the city, it becomes an issue for the city planning committee? No, it's not the joint planning control committee. Oh, so the joint planning control committee of the three councils. Um, and if it's a um, if it's a major scheme, then there are two different options in terms of the processes. Well, no question at all. If you're building a guided bus way, it's a transport box over. Yeah. If you're building an unguided bus way, you can't do a transport box over, and therefore it's either a planning process, as with the joint development control committee, or potentially it's a very large scheme development control. Order. So I think we will come back on in writing if we can. Yeah. Okay. So um, then, sorry, that was question one, and then you've got the three parts I was referring to are uh, two A and B and C. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm sort of in time. So um, basically, the environmental design guide, what is the working status of the design guide? Um, I wasn't quite sure whether it's adopted, but I know it's sent back for further work. And um, where can you see the latest draft and who is coordinating the revised brief and groundwork? I've looked at the website and it's so opaque, I just couldn't find it. So that would help. And I made a suggestion about perhaps setting up a workshop for our political discussion. Well, the, the website does have the record of the decision on the design guide right earlier on. So, um, uh, can you share with them in terms of the status of the design guide and when it's going to come back to the Assembly and Board? In the basis of it is guidance. It is not a policy that's adopted in the way that transport strategy or planning policy are adopted formally because the city deal uses and must adhere to the adopted planning and transport policies of um, the county council and the district and whatever is the relevant district council depending on where any particular scheme is taking place. So the policy framework is set by the three local authorities um, and the aim of the guidance is to make sure that we capture, that those things are captured in one place with some good practice examples to follow for schemes. Um, the board decided that we should be using it and improving it so that improvement is on the way and the revised version G should be brought before the assembly of board in early 2017. The document that did go to the board and the assembly is being used on Milton Road as, as a sort of informative, as, as draft guidance. Um, but the full document will be informed by Milton Road and then that document will come back to both the assembly and the board. Yeah, really um, I think I understand that. I, I just get the, um, the, the impression that there's so many um, good and better ideas and we had a more multidisciplinary disciplinary approach um, and set down the principles of this guide uh, before it gets taken to NLS. It would be a much better document. And something like Transport for London, they have urban design teams, creatives, architects, engineers. I just think the City Deal Board is missing a trick and is there funding to have you know, what I call a rather messy workshop, but just get these 
creatives and engineers together to come up with something which flair it might include light rail, for example. I'd uh, maybe some very limited what we've got. Well, I'll, I'll, we'll have a think about the proposal for a workshop. I mean, we've got some work early next year that will be part of preparing this updated document. Um, so, if we get back to you in the next fortnight, then we can respond on the specific suggestion of a workshop, which may be in the early part of 2017. Okay? Thank you. Um, the question from Edward Lee is in writing. Uh, Mr. Lee is not able to be here. Um, we will um, prepare a written response. There's a number of claims made, statements made, analysis in the detail, which we had yesterday. So um, we're not in a position to uh, produce a thorough response, um, but we will be publishing response to that on the City Field website and sharing it with Mr. Lee. So, if we can move to question five from Nikki Marion. The Greater Cambridge City Deal website states that an eight point plan to tackle Cambridge gridlock without the need for a congestion charge has been announced. The proposals would reduce traffic and significantly speed up commuter journeys for people who choose to travel by public transport, bike, or walk. One of those eight point promises on street parking controls. Responsibility for this has been delegated to the Cambridge Joint Area Committee, but they have failed to produce even a draft for public consideration. The minutes of their July meeting state that the working group would test its draft policy with the RAs that it had already been in contact with. This would give some indication of whether the proposals had any support. To do this, it would be necessary for the working group to develop its proposals well in advance of the October committee meeting to allow the group time to both consult the RAs and to evaluate the responses. That October meeting was postponed from the 25th of October to the 1st of November, and at the last minute it was announced that the draft would not be available before January 2017. Since the committee did not manage to consult with RAs in the four months between July and October, it seems unlikely that they will manage it in the weeks between now and January. And also, it's failed to provide background for the um, proposal that's come forward from Amanda Taylor for a residence parking scheme in the Morley Mor um, Road area, which is really a pity. The committee chair suggested that the delay stems in part from the committee's concerns about negative public reaction to any policy recommendations for on-street parking controls. So surely, inviting community involvement on the draft would be a prudent move. Input from people who know how it feels to have their streets clogged with commuter cars and who are ready and willing to help work out details for their neighbourhoods is the only way that the City Deal will be able to gain wide support if they're serious about tackling congestion and the associated pollution. Smarter Cambridge Transport has already suggested some options for consideration and their petition has attracted support from every ward in the city. What is the board doing to ensure that work such as this and a thorough assessment of the Hills Road cycleway, for instance, are given the urgent priority that they need. Um, well, um, I, uh, uh, as you know, parking controls and in residential streets is a key part of the congestion plan. Um, and like several people, um, we experience this uh, daily as an issue. So uh, the problem of of parking on residential streets is a priority for the city deal. But our approach has been that it, we are not the people who led that piece of work. So we, we are uh, committed to getting resident association input into the document and working with the, um, the uh, Cambridge Joint Area Committee to achieve that. Uh, I think they, they, they themselves need to get the detail right. And as I understand it, there was a number of details about the draft document just weren't clear enough. So the, the City Deal Board has had no direct involvement to date, other than, as you say, um, we are committed to ensuring that this comes forward um, early in the new year. And I think it also, because it's a County Council issue, it has to go to the County Council's Highways and Community Infrastructure Committee get approved there. But, so the process is that CJAP, or the Joint Area Committee, has to come up with the, the proposals there will be a consultation period 
then it will go to the um, uh, Council of Aids, who chairs that committee. Um, and in terms of the city deal, yes, we we uh, see this as a uh, an essential element. It doesn't change behaviour completely, but it certainly restricts the opportunities of people to keep driving into the city. Um, uh, and the city deal is prepared to put um, resource into it, including to cover the setup costs of such schemes, not necessarily the annual ongoing costs, but to cover the costs of setting up schemes if they're supported by residents in, in areas within the city. So we, we do want to support effective uh, uh, proposals, um, and we will be talking to the, um, the Joint Area Committee about their time scale, and perhaps Council Lakes can add for the County Council on there. Uh, in proper leadership on this. I think you've got your light still on. If you okay. otherwise, okay. Uh, I think just to add a couple of points to the chairs, um, we are certainly engaged. That's uh, both county councils and district councils on the joint joint, uh, joint committee. They are making progress. They want to make sure they get it right, and that's one of the areas they've been looking at to ensure that they do get it right. It will go to the Highways and Communities Committee, which I don't chair actually, <laughs> um, and that is chaired by Councillor Kwan. So in due course it will go to that committee for consideration uh, in due course. If I just pick up maybe your other question, which I think was about the Hill Road Cycling Project. Um, at a recent e and &E committee, that's a committee that I chair, which is the Economy and Environment Committee, it was decided that the, we would set up a member working group to review all cycling projects throughout the county. Um, that was discussed this morning at the meeting which I chaired. Um, we have got the names of the councillors who wish to be involved in that and we will obviously be setting that up in due course really in terms of reference and set up the dates. Um, bear in mind that it's a Cambridgeshire County Council we will look at all the sort of projects which came through in respect of rural market towns as well as the ones within Cambridge. So that member working group will proceed and will report in due course. So, the, so in terms of the timetable, we're looking to get the Joint Area Committee to report in January and but to have discussions before then. Um, can, do you want to say something in the Council of Birkett or probably make some good response as well? Well, I just want to say that twice and, and this morning I heard you say in due course, but my question is about the urgency of this and what the oversight of this board is going to be to ensure that there really is a sense of urgency, because if they've already not managed to do this since January, they're not going to do it in the two months before next January, and in January we'll get another set of excuses. Well, I don't expect that's going to be the case. Um, Councillor Burkett. Thank you for coming. Uh, it's great to ask the question because uh, you enable me to share my frustration as well. Um, and you're probably thoroughly confused by references to all these committees getting around that. No, I'm getting familiar with them. But <laughs> the point is, you said responsibility has been delegated to the Cambridge Joint Area Committee. But the point is, it wasn't delegated by the City Board. The problem here is that none of this has got anything to do with the City Board. We would love it, it's a plan. We, we think residents parking is a brilliant idea, but it, it's not been delegated to the city deal. It's retained by the County Council Highway and Community Infrastructure Committee and by the joint committee between the county and the city. They don't touch us. But we do have a frustration, I have a personal frustration, that it is taking a very, very, very long time to go through the joint area committee of the city and the county. So in a way, it's great you're here, but you're in the wrong place. You ought to be in the city council and the county and the county council urging the joint area committee. Those are the councillors of the joint area committee. And you're right. So you say what is the board doing to ensure that such as this is given priority. One, we are and we have expressed our frustration and I express it again in public, we've expressed it in private. Two, we're doing all we can to urge the committee of the city and the county to get on with it, but I do recognise they got it right. Three, I think it's absolutely correct that they should 
uh, avoid negative public reaction to inviting some community involvement in drafting. And four, and this is what we can do, we said we'll put the money in for the implementation because it costs money to start well. I think the current parking permit is 52 quid, and I think what usually happens is there's an upfront charge of 52 quid that's levied on the residents before the annual 52 quid gets going. And we have informed the offer that we, the city, will pay that upfront 52 quid on behalf of all the residents, and they don't have to pay it. But it's all irrelevant until the CJAC committee actually meets. What we will do is we will write a letter in terms of just putting our views into the public domain and we'll get their response. And we will press for the timetable of January to be kept to and we will be clear about what support we will give. But as Councillor Burkett said, we have had no direct involvement in this debate. But we will we will press them. But it is one of your promises. And that's why we want to press them. Thanks for your question. Thank you. Question six from Dr. Gabriel Fox. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> hello. Um, I, my question relates to the um, A428 Cameron Cambridge Better Bus Journey scheme. Uh, what I'm asking is, will the executive board please agree to instruct the transport officers to conduct a full, fair, and transparent appraisal of two modifi modified versions? of uh, the route that's laid of option one in, in all the reports, uh, which I'll just put uh, on a working basis here called option 1A and 1B, uh, which I'll just describe a briefly for the written description. So options at 1A and 1B are express high quality bus services, so essentially comparable to the uh, uh, busway, the option three type of service in terms of um, bus quality, uh, branding, ticketing and so on. Uh, and with a similar number of stops on route to option 3 or 3A, which we are guessing will be in the order of maybe four or five stops. Um, they will run uh, primarily along existing roads west of Madame March, with signalisation of Madame March roundabout to give bus pri priority. Uh, on road inbound bus lane from Madame March roundabout along Madame Rise, over the M11, over bridge to the junction of Hayden Lovelace Road. And with a future option of, of a tidal operation were to be the case that outbound congestion significantly uh, deteriorated in the future. And then uh, con continuing through the West Cambridge site, so it, it, this is obviously clearly different from the existing option one, continuing through the West Cambridge site on, on the same basis as options three, four and five, then supplemented by a park and ride um, at Scotland Farm. In fact, I don't think that the location actually impacted on the business case. Um, and then finally, with, a, with including a high quality segregated cycleway pedestrian walkway from Bourne to Cambridge by Coton, which I think has been is part of the thinking from the um, last executive board meeting. So that as a package, then the difference between 1A and 1B would only be that 1A would use the existing A428 to a carriageway uh, as far as, uh, as the Madeline Mark roundabout and then continue. Uh, uh, as to the other route, where at option B would uh, have a, a new offline segregated dedicated bus route connection between Canada and Bourne Airfield as envisaged for several of the other options, and then after Bourne Airfield continue on the St. Nick's Road with bus priority measures in place for the A1303A 428 junction, which I think is uh, envisaged for one of the other options already. Um, so they're, they're hybrid options. The, the, the key point here is that they are significantly different and, and an improvement over option one. Firstly, because uh, there is uh, full online segregation inbound from Madame Mott to the West Cambridge site. And then secondly, because there is service to the West Cambridge site, which makes a, a very significant difference in terms of how the economics work. The other thing is that, that they are a valid comparison to option three. So for example, they have the same start and end point, which I think is pretty important. Um, and we have evidence that if you score them through the various scoring systems in the reports, like the MCAF and the wider economic benefits, they actually are comparable to, if not superior to, option 3 and 3A. Um, so I think it's really important that we have, if you call it do minimum in inverted commas, that we have a valid comparison 
uh, with a, a, a useful and viable de minimum option. And I just do want to point out the last bit that I know that, we, that the last four of you uh, kindly agreed to do feasibility work on, on, on an on road option on Madhuri Rise, which we will appreciate. Um, but that was for two bus lanes. So we don't need to wait for the appraisal of what we're suggesting, 1A and 1B, for that topographical survey and assessment because we already know that one inbound bus lane is technically feasible. We've got the reports on that, all the way over the bridge. So the, the appraisal of 1A and 1B can actually be carried out now. I think it's useful that it's done in a timely fashion. Um, well, it's quite a complex set of issues. The, clearly, we, we spent three and a half hours on the, the last board meeting and we went through um, the various options. And as you say, in response to the local liaison forum and also the recommendation of the assembly and representations from local groups, we included uh, in our continuing assessment the viability of um, the on road option. So, we have still to complete that piece of work, understand. So we have to do the topographical survey and then any engineering analysis on that option. Um, but as the board decided at the last meeting, the um, the core option that we would be uh, that we've adopted, which was three A, um, Francis. Yeah. Um, option three A um, is effectively a segregated route. Um, so the current, the next stage of assessment is to compare the outline business case for that against the practicality of the on-road option and uh, further work to be undertaken on that. Um, so in terms of the options report, I think um, it did um, Mr. Mingus look at these options. Do an option which you haven't given. So I think you're in a position. 
I, we feel you're in a position which can't be justified. You've gone ahead with an, uh, an option without properly testing against other reasonable options. This, this exactly the same issue that the local plan was beset with. The, the inspector complained you haven't uh, assessed reasonable options for the same standards as your preferred option. So we're just asking you to take that step on a £200 million project, take that step, assess reasonable other options, and then if at the end they can be discarded, then I think you've know, you, you made a reasonable case. If they can't, then you need to know now before the money is sent. Um, Councillor Bates, and then I think, um, not Miss and uh, Councillor Birkin. I was going to suggest actually, this is a complex issue, as we all know. I, I think before we get into a debate about what we should do or shouldn't do, or what that might be minimal or maximal or anything else, I think it would be sensible to take it away and write to Dr. Fox in due course. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm happy if we had a, a, a meeting with the, the board members and with um, colleagues. Okay. 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 Councillor okay. Mr. Higgins, can I just ask you some just factual questions, just <clears throat> to see whether we can just get in the public record some data. So the topographical survey that's been done down Manly Hill, has that been that's been commissioned now, has it? And so my question is, has it been commissioned? Who's doing it? When might they report? How will it be made public? And have the terms of reference been shared with the LLF? Um, it's all on the track separately at the last board meeting. The Boxing Commission terms of reference have been shared. Talk about who some has actually started with insights already. I don't know if it's actually included yet, but it's, it's, it's on track. We expect we should have a very early in the new year. And the uh, outline engineering design will then follow that. I think we said February for that. That is on track as well. And again, we'll, we'll sit down and have a session with the LRF and uh, get those plans as they produce. And who's writing it? That's the one I said, sir. And you say we share with the LLF. Is there a way it can be put on a website? Because it, it, it will be many people more than just the LLF that are interested. Um, yes, in theory, in terms of you may need special software to look at it because it will be done an automatic format. Um, but I don't think particularly why not, I'm not an expert and I'm also kind of all over the website, so I'll double check that for three people. Thank you, because I think it would be good if it was as quickly and as publicly just put out there and then we can move on from that one. So my second question then is the feasibility study, but I was just started because one follows the other, will that be scanned through as well? It's a preliminary engineering design and we'll fire with the county data study. It's just going to be, be drawing what might be possible. And if it does show something's possible, it wouldn't be fine for you to do it differently. It's just a, a quick, can we fit, can we fit something in uh, exercise? Um, that was going to be my sense as well. And then a similar question when it's done, I'm sure it can be shared with the LLF, but is there a sort of website that that could get on? Because it will be as well as the LLF. Uh, effectively, that's what I was, in effect, I also had. Um, really, uh, really, 